Okay, we're going. So, right. we'll start with... We met back in high school. We are just, just talking about before we turned on here. Yes. On the football field. Yes. I was in grade 9, you're grade 10. Yeah. That's how I knew you when we started. Yeah. Fort Erie guy. When did DJing start? Was Were you doing it then? Yeah, yeah. Because I kind of remember. Yeah, it was just sort of like a side, not this, like just a, a hobby sort of thing, right? Back, back then, but it was a passion of mine. But I started in 2000. So, um... So that was... So that was probably in grade... I was probably grade 12, 11 or 12, maybe? Yeah, I graduated. I think it was grade 11. Yeah. Yeah, is when I started. Because I remember... Uh, I don't know if you remember this, but <laughs> we had the Battle of the Bands at, at, yes. at school. And we had our band, Perplexing Audio Death, was... was uh, <laughs> It was me, Nate Hindle, Doobie... Yes. Uh, Chris Doobie on drums, and... Uh, my buddy Mike Elsich and wow. uh, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get uh, called out for not knowing. It'll come to you. Yeah, it'll come to us. But Elsage, yeah, it was Elsich likes to rap. Was yeah, he was rap? a rapper. It was so it was like a it was like half rap, half like I remember the very intro song was like a heavy. Uh, Nate was like doing some riffs. And it was like I, a super I, heavy song to begin with, and then we just went right into uh, some hip hop stuff. And I was DJing, so it was like that was. Uh, I do kind of remember. Do you? We yeah, killed, we killed it. We won, we won the. the was, Battle B- of Bands. was Biggins part of that or no? No, because Biggins was music too, but no. Yeah, no, he wasn't a part of that that group. So, but how did like how did it start? Like, when did you first? Because DJing is a little bit different. Like, I have no music talent. Zero. <laughs> Zero, yeah. but you play an instrument, you mm-hmm. sing, DJing. Like when? When did it start? Start like DJing for me started for my like uh, my older brother. He's six years older than me. Uh, he started out as a DJ, uh, DJing in college bars in in Buffalo. Oh, say so, yeah. So he um, he always had a, like he had like CDJs, like the early CDJs at home. What's that? Uh, like. Um, they're they're turntables, but they're not turntables. They're for CDs, right? Okay, so you gotcha. put the CD in. You have a little jog wheel, and you can kind of cue your music up. So he was DJing that way, um, but he always had this passion for DJing, and and it just kind of uh, just bled to me, right? Yeah. Like I, I I loved it too. So he would take me, he would take me with him uh, to like the record stores to go get records and stuff like that, and I was just right behind him, like picking through records and. He saw that, you know, he saw the the joy I had and like how much passion and love I had for this whole thing. That's so he so actually, sick. he actually bought me uh, my first setup, my two turntables and a mixer, bought me my first setup, first couple records and just said, here you go, man, let's, do, let's see you do your thing. And then, and so how old were you when this, uh, I was probably, oh geez, probably 15 sick so yeah. when we we're at high school in high school yeah before that's, driving before driving yeah i was that's so sick doing some turntable stuff and then right? and then so you're doing it he's doing it playing yeah he's, gigs, he's doing it playing gigs making and money you're, you're just doing it trying to learn yeah yeah and then when did like when did gigs start like well because i faintly I'll, so lightly remember but it's yeah. like such a cool evolution yeah well I, you know what i should mention at the same time uh my buddy nate yeah, uh, Nate Hindle was a big influence on me too because he was uh, he had turntables, but he had like an old set of turntables, and he had records and and uh, me and him just loved it, like loved That's the awesome. whole. He got me introduced into like um, turntablism, they call it. So like it was the uh, Cubert and like uh, Mixmaster Mike, the Invisible Scratch Pickles. These were all like right turntableist music, right? That that I never heard before. He heard it and he showed me, and I just fell in love. And I just, uh, I started buying VHS tapes because I was telling somebody, I was, I was telling somebody, it's like, there wasn't even YouTube when I was starting. No, no. So I was like, you go on YouTube now, you can watch any tutorial on how to scratch and how to do whatever. And me, I had to buy VHS tapes. <laughs> so I had like 50 VHS tapes and I just like watched them and, and just taught myself. Dane Young, was he part of this? Dane Young wasn't a part. He, he was a friend of mine. Uh, at the same time I was DJing, I also had drums. Right. Uh, and yes. I was, and I was drumming with him in a band. Yeah. We were an Oasis cover band is what we were. <laughs> <laughs> and Dane, I don't know if, you, Dane, if anybody, yeah. he, he looks exactly like Liam yeah. uh, Gallagher. Like he, and he used to sound exactly like him. He was super talented. He still is super talented. And, uh, 
and yeah, we we him and uh, me, Mike wow. Grabinski. You remember Mike Grabinski? Uh, uh, all these names. Yeah. that one more famous. And then he we had, older? He's he was uh, same age as uh, same age as Dane. Yeah, because gotcha. they were in a year. Uh, they were year, gotcha. same as Nate and all them. But yeah, no, that was. I'm a like getting goosebumps thinking of like all the old, all those old guys. <laughs> all seen the old guys yeah. yeah, I remember one time going over to Dane's place, and I'm almost certain that you were drumming, but it was mm-hmm. him and somebody else, and it was you guys just had like a practice, and I came over one time and watched, and I was blown away. In his like, basement, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That's where we. That's where that the magic it was happened. So man. sick. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty good, man. Like we were, we sounded pretty good. Like even though that's all we did was play Oasis songs, but it might be like <laughs> if if we did that now, we would kill it somewhere at a bar, you know, like yeah. it'd be a cover band, you know. So, but it was fun, man. It was good times. So that's that's when it got started, and, and then yeah, that was happening at the same time as my DJing thing, uh, and then like Nate, straight. Music then we talent. just started. We just started. That's when I started producing too, as well. Uh, making beats and stuff like that. You've I got would... some sick beats, eh? Thank you. Like, for Thanks, real. Man. Yeah, Thanks. I haven't heard them all. But no. I've, I've heard, and I'm like, they're sick. <laughs> no one's ever heard them all. Yeah, I got, no, I, no. There's, there's, you know, I got some that people hear and, uh, that are out there, but then I have a, a vault of, of stuff. I bet. So, Does that ever come to light, or is that just... It will. It yeah. will, yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's lots of, of big deals going on right now, so... Yeah? For, for the catalog. So it's going to be, yeah... It'll, so some of the highlights that I'm aware of is the Juno is so sick. Thank you. When when did that happen? Uh, that was in 2012. Uh, that's when I, I was with uh, a crew called a tribe called Red. Right. Uh, which is which was a DJ collective at the time. Uh, when I joined them, uh, that's when we started producing music. Right. Uh, were they already established? Did they were established them? as DJs. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. But they weren't producers at the time. Uh, so when I stepped up and, and they asked me to join the crew, um, which was in like 2009, right? Uh, that's when um, we I started making. That's when we started making powwow step, is what right. they called it, a new genre of music that no yeah. one's really even heard. So it got uh, it got coined by like I think Exclaim magazine or something like that, and uh, yeah, the, the, the ball just rolled and it was like crazy. So in two, that was in 2009. So, and then we released two albums, and it was the second album uh, that really blew up and right. got us. Got us like uh, it's, the, the album was called Nation Nation. Nice. And it was like That's so sick. Yeah, it was. It was like a Players Prize shortlister, um, and it was like nominated for a bunch of other awards. But that 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 year, two thousand twelve, was the year that we won Breakthrough Artist of the Year at, at the Junos. It's so sick. How, so these guys are they local or they're from Ottawa? They're Ottawa. out of Ottawa. Yeah. So, so how did you meet them? They heard about me, um, my battle career. I we kind of skipped my battle career. So yeah. Well, we yeah. yeah yeah. So we'll start from the battle careers. So, yeah. Um, so after like after in high school when I got into this DJing thing, I started uh, I. I found out about this competition that they would have. It's called the DMC. Okay. The DMCs is a worldwide uh, turntablist DJ battle. So, and I used to buy DMC videos and, and VHS videos all the time. And I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I want to do this. I want to win the world title, right? So, um, yeah. So I just practiced, 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 practiced. And, and where? Uh, at home, in my yeah. basement. Basement. Many nights not going out with the fellas, you yeah. know, just staying in. And just practicing, you know, just getting myself better at, at, at this whole thing. Because I, I knew it's like, okay, you got to practice in order to get better yeah. right, with, with anything. So, yeah, I just sacrificed uh, party times with my buddies and just, yeah, you know. no doubt. So it saved me a lot of money. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> you know. And so, yeah, I, I practiced for about four years. So, like, I started in 2000. And then in 2004, I was like, okay, I'm ready to battle now. I'm like, I feel confident enough to... To, to you right. know, so my th- so I went in my first battle in St. Catharines, and it was funny too because so is like, this like a circuit? How does it work? This battle in St. Catharines wasn't a DMC okay. battle, okay. so I wasn't kind of ready for the DMC because I knew right. that's the elite battle, right? So I tested myself out in this little small battle in in St. Catharines, and uh, it was funny too because like I was such an amateur at the time. I showed up right, and there's these guys with their like nice record bags and their nice cases for their needles and I got a no frills bag with my <laughs> records in it right and I'm just like such a I don't know what's going on scared as hell you know nervous as hell and like my family my brother were all there they're just rooting me on right and and so I yeah my first battle my first ever battle I 
completely got my ass kicked. Which really? Was, which was fantastic. You know. Yeah. You learn. A, you learn so a lot how, more. What's when you the beat. battle like? Like that battle was was. Is um, it like eight mile? Like is it something like that? Kind of, sort of. I mean, like there's different types. The one, the one that that, the one I was at, the very first one was just everybody. There was like six DJs, right. and every DJ got like five minutes to right. do, go up there, do their five minute thing, and then that was it. And then the judges kind of said, "Okay, gotcha. first, second, third. I didn't even place. Like it was just horrible. Like I wasn't ready. Like <laughs> this but, was after four years. This was after four years of, of getting to where I thought my skills could be. You know, right? Just testing where I was at. Yeah. So, but that taught me a lot. Like, yeah. I learned so much from that battle. The next year is when I entered the DMCs. Those are the, that's the big daddies. Wow. And that was in uh, Hamilton. So the DMCs, what they do is they have regionals, right? In Canada, um, every province has their regionals. So in, in Ontario, they had uh, the Hamilton, Toronto. Uh, those are the two big ones. Right. So I competed in the Hamilton one, didn't place. Uh, I, oh no, I placed uh, third okay. in, in Hamilton my first time. So I was pretty stoked. I that mean, is? It's not too bad. Out of a bunch of guys. Out of sure. like 12. Wow. Yeah, so there was a, was there was a bunch than... of guys that I beat out, you know, and so that was in 2004. Then the next year, I stepped up and I and I went to Toronto. I did the Toronto DMCs. Wow. Yeah, and I was a nervous wreck because at the Toronto DMCs, the judges, uh, one of the judges was A Track, and A Track is like one of my idols growing up. Like he's he's really? still one of those guys that that you know he's not only he's a world champion, he's a world DMC champion. He won it when he was 12. Okay, so he was the judge. Yeah, so A Track was a judge. A Track is like, like I said, one of my idols growing up. So I was nervous as hell. First of all, yeah. And plus, it's the That's Toronto, wild. it's the Toronto DMCs, right? So, uh, like, a lot of the Canadian champions came out of Toronto. You know, and like Toronto is the hub for right for great DJs. You know, so it was I was nervous as hell, and yeah, so I placed third there. Wow. That year, the 2000. More than 12 people, too, I'm sure. Yeah, there was about 15 that time, 15 wow. or 16. So I was pretty happy with that. You know, like, I felt, I could see the progression of where, you know, like, and I felt, okay, this is paying off, this is paying off, I'm getting closer, getting closer. Um, so I just kept at it, kept kept practicing and kept doing it. And then in 2006, they had the finals, the Canadian finals. I won, I won the regional. I came first in... Uh, I did. I did the Waterloo. I think it was Kitchener Waterloo. I right. did. I did. They had a regional there, and it was kind of uh, you know. I kind of was like, okay, there might not be a you know a lot of good DJs there, so I'll go try there. You know, right. instead of trying to win Toronto, which is just so many really tough. So yeah, it was kind of strategic. You know, right? So, so I went there, won that battle. So nice. I, that gave me a pass to the Canadian finals, which were in Ottawa, right? That, that year, two thousand six, and. Um, it was crazy because I remember there was so much hype around like, oh, this got to watch out for Shubby's coming, you know, like he's, a lot of guys were like, you know. I love it. Yeah. And, and it just, it built me up too. So and I just had to like, yeah. It just it was, before. Yeah, no doubt. So I, I, I uh, battled in, and so DMC, they have three types of battles. They have the, they, the one that's called the six minute showcase, right? Right. They have a head to head supremacy. And they have a, a team championships. Right. So I did the team. Or sorry, I did the head to head and the showcase that right. that year. Uh, head to head is is different. Where you you go, it's like it's like a eight, eight mile. mile. Yeah. yeah. You go up against another DJ, and it's like a tournament style. And it's, really, yeah. Each 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 round uh, that you have two rounds against your opponent, and each round is a minute and a half. So for a minute and a half, you do your thing. They do their thing for a minute and a half, and then the, there's judges there that say either one or two. Really? Yeah. So. Um, wow. Yeah, that's it, intense. Fun. Yeah, eh? it, it is intense. It's 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 a lot of fun. They still do that today, you know. Like there's still those battles going on today, so it's pretty fun. So I, I entered both that year. The showcase one is like the 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 other first battle that I was in. Each DJ, we get six minutes to do our thing, right? And then, but you go, you know, in order. And then the, how does the, that work though? Every are you using the same equipment? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is that yeah? It's it's a part of the the rules. Um, they used two turntables and a mixer. So then so you is that spring. hard? Not using your own equipment? Like I've never done kind any of, of this. kind of sort of like the the like if you don't have the same equipment. Like I had the same turntables at the time because I upgraded my stuff 
because I wanted to use exactly what they had. Yeah, that's smart. You know, yeah. so, um, but the mixer is, I, the mixer is what I didn't have. So getting used to a different mixer was kind of weird at first. Right. Um, but that year, the 2006, the year I competed at the Canadian finals, you were allowed to bring your own mixer and use it. Oh yeah. So I was so comfortable, you know, like it was awesome. It was, nice. It was, it was, uh. Yeah, it was definitely more comfortable for sure. Um, so, so yeah, in 2006, uh, I ended up coming in second place wow. at the Canadian Finals. Wow. Second place in both, uh, in both the showcase and the head-to-head. Wow. So Who I, I was you? like, uh, in the showcase, a DJ called Wondercut. Wow, you remember too. Was, like oh this. yeah, for sure. He's a good, he's a good friend of mine still. Oh nice. He's awesome. He kind of like see what happens is like a lot of these DJs they 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 pay their dues sort of thing that's how it's kind of looked at is like if you're in this i was new kind of to this whole right. canadian finals thing right so i was a new face i couldn't win the first year you know because there was guys that were at the canadian finals for a couple couple years right you know until they you know eventually won it like Wondercut, he was in it for the, like the canadian finals for the last three years or so so but yeah no i, I was surprised just to come second yeah that's you know wild. as a fresh new face onto the, the the scene so so is it political or is it it depends on a what's, little bit. It depends on where, it, like DJ battles are. They owe it'll always be political. You know, yeah, like you'll see, never. This is, I'm not yeah, familiar with the scene at all. Yeah, it because it, it, it's always in a different city or in a different. You know, like and they're run. They're they're you right. know these cities are run by different people. Maybe friends of friends. You know, so there's always you'll right. never get a straight. You know, except when you go to the world finals. World finals are always in London, England. That's where they always are, run by the same company. That's Have why you there's been to that before twice. Really? Yeah. So I made it. So after 2006, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? we'll it, yeah. I was like, okay, I'm second place now. Oh, that's and, so sick. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I gotta go. I'm going for it this year. This is my year. So in 2007, I won it. I won the Canadian Finals in Toronto. <laughs> yeah. This was. It was. It's on YouTube if you check it out. Yeah. Um, the my performance at 2007 was. So what cool. would I YouTube? Because I'm definitely gonna watch that later. Just DJ Shub DMC 2007. Perfect. Yeah. I'll and, watch and that later. It's in Toronto. It was in Toronto. I won in Toronto. I beat up like 15 other DJs. So that gave me the ticket to go to the World Finals in England, which was like... That's insane. So up until that point, you know, for me, my dream was to be on those... Because I used to buy World Final VHSs to watch and study right. to become, you know, to, right. to help me. So my mind was blown. My mind was like... I'm going to be on one of those videos that I used to watch, you know, it's like, so that was like my highlight. Like I, that was the highlight of my life was to be just on a video. I don't even care how far I went, but if I could be you're on a DVD, be on, yeah, yeah. What you've been studying. Yeah. Exactly. So I was, I was so happy. I, so I went to the world finals in London, England, and, uh, that's like the DJ Olympics. So you're, I'm going up against 32 other countries. Like there's Japan, so Germany, it is, man. It's so it's such that's a crazy like next level. Yeah, it's, it people everybody's on point there. I'm guessing. Oh yeah, you're you're dealing with the best. Yeah, out of every country. Yeah, right. So, are there some countries that are more notorious for being better than others? Yeah, like U.S., right, Canada, uh, France, Germany, and uh, Japan. I was going to say Japan. Yeah, too, Japan yeah. are, are they're oh, those five are always like competing. Yeah. The UK wow. too, sorry. The UK that they're they're they always have a, a good guy too. But most of the champions, world champions are from those six countries, right? So when you were doing all this along the way, was it native inspired along the way like when I don't no. I don't want to get off track. No. No. That, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. at the time. So but, but it yeah. was it was great. I was the first um indigenous uh dj is that the proper term you can you can use whatever okay <laughs> just <laughs> we don't we don't we, we try not to say indian yeah right? yeah so yeah indigenous first nations um a lot, a lot of people don't like aboriginal but i don't mind it okay. it's whatever but uh yeah so i just say i just say indigenous it kind of covers yeah more, <laughs> more yeah. yeah seems not to piss anybody off so yeah. that's good we'll go with that indigenous i, I don't yeah. even know if i can say that but sounds good <laughs> uh so yeah, so I was I was proud just to be the first indigenous DJ yeah, to, ever, to so ever represent sick. like that. So it's so sick. Yeah. So I was like proud to to not only represent Canada but my people as well. Yeah. You know? So uh, yeah, it was fun, man. It was I had that, but I wasn't I wasn't making power step at the time though. Right. So so okay. So let me just think about this a little bit. What what inspirations do you have for different styles along the way? Like 
Because I, I know almost nothing about this. Like, mm-hmm. I've heard your stuff, and I'm like, sick. Yeah. But I don't know, like, different influences. Like, when when you're talking about this, what it's reminding me of is when we played football and watching game tape playing football mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff. But when you're watching game tape on DJs, mm-hmm. are you studying mistakes they made? Like, their style? Yeah. Like, yeah, everything. What the really. judges liked? Yeah. Like, kind you're, of, you're kind of just taking uh, everything into account. Like, you're watching for all of that. Right, you're watching, you're watching style. Somewhere. You're watching style. You're watching like um, what gets the most crowd reactions. You know right. what? What? Uh, so you're watching, and I always watch the best. You know, like when I'm watching it, I'll watch the best, and then and then if uh, you know, I'll take kind of like what works, what's really working, what I think I could f- I can make better. So you're always looking at, at what they're doing and trying to make yeah. it a little bit better. But I'm watching all these like champions, right? So. It's and that's so what every, every DJs are doing, you know, like they're always watching the best to try to improve on things. Yeah. Mm. So then you went to Worlds. Went to the Worlds. And, and that was in 2008, 7, 8? That was 7 and 8, yeah. yeah. So 7, yeah, I won in 7 and then I I went, I won again uh, two to- back to back uh, in 2008. So I won the Canadian champion again. Right. And then went back to... Worlds. World finals. Yeah. The clo- I never won. The closest I came was fifth, though. Wow. Yeah. I was the fifth out of 32, right? So I was pretty fifth happy. in the world. That's yeah. intense, bro. And then I retired. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm done. It just takes too much practice and... Lots of work. Lots of work, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, I was, what, what, like, the influence is you just take a little bit from everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, just bring your own style into it. And, so, and try to be original. And then in, in 8 is when you stopped, and then what? And then... In 2008 is when I stopped. 2009, um, I was kind of just figuring... I was doing more production work and just trying to figure out what I was going to do. And that's when I got the call from uh, the guys from A Tribe Called Red. And they're from up in Ottawa. Ottawa. Yeah. yeah, they invited me um, to come out and showcase. So the, they used to throw a party in Ottawa called the Electric Powwow, Right which was a party geared towards First Nations kids in Ottawa that were in Ottawa for school, you know. And a lot of these uh, kids were from, like, way out reserves, right, that weren't used to city life. Right. So they would come into Ottawa, go to school, and not really have any place to to, to feel safe, sort mm-hmm. of. So, yeah, you were saying about the, the party in Ottawa. Yeah, so this party was made to, to just to be a comfortable space for these uh, First Nations kids that were going to college, university in Ottawa. Nice. Just to have a space for them to gather in a... In a um, it's a transition. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to have them go out to a club and not feel, you know... Yeah. Out of place. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, and, it, and it, it, it was so popular. Like, it sold out... Uh, at this club called Babylon in Ottawa, it was selling out every month. It was a monthly party. Oh, really? Yeah. So they were selling out, and there was lines around the block to get into this party. Uh, and so, it was only well, it wasn't. It was geared. It wasn't only for, but it was geared towards. Okay. Right. So anybody, but word got out. You know, like yeah, for this kind of party. party. Yeah, yeah. It was a sick. It's just <laughs> a sick party. It was sick DJs. So they were they were DJing. A tribe called Red was DJing uh, th- those parties. And what they would do is they would showcase, they would bring in guest DJs, uh, particularly First Nations DJs, to come in and do Perfect a little set. set. Yeah. So they heard about me, brought me in, and I just did a set there. But it was that party that inspired me to, to like, it was the first time I've ever been to a club, and it was full of brown faces, you know, like, all, all me. You know, like, I'm like, wow, this yeah, is incredible. Hey. And... In our nation's capital. Yeah. And That's yeah, so exactly. Sick. Right? And it was empowering. It was great. It was a great feeling. Cause I I'm never, getting goosebumps I, just yeah, thinking about how it, awesome. It was it. awesome. You yeah. know, it was great. And at the time, uh, the uh, the guys from Tribe, they were just mixing and just like uh, mixing tunes and stuff like that. And once in a while, they would mix like, they would throw in a traditional powwow song into their mix and mix it with dubstep. And when that happened... It was like an uproar. The party just like elevated, right? And I, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it because I remember watching this and going, wow. Because it's the first time I've seen the love for culture and the love for music, you know? Like, it's the first time I've seen together. them come together and like this music meant something more to these people, right? Than, than I knew, right? Like, so right. I was like, 
I turned and I said, I got to be a part of this, man. Like, yeah. this has, this is a, call. there's a reason why I'm here. Yeah. You know, so I told, I asked them, I said, guys, you know what? I produce, you know, um, and I really want to do something to this. Like, can, you know, can I try to do something, like make some stuff? And they're like, sure, man, try it. Like, do whatever you want. Right. So I went back home that weekend and I was just like telling my wife, uh, and I was just like, man, you got to see this party. It's crazy. And like, they're making this music and they're playing these musics. And, and I told them I was going to produce. So I went and, and just like spent two days in the studio just making, uh, just trying out some stuff. That's right? so sick. And then I came up, the first song was Electric Power Drum and uh, made that song sent it to the guys and I said here guys you know here's my first attempt what do you guys think and they were like holy shit they're like you're come to Ottawa join the crew let's start producing let's do this right right so it was uh that was a big uh pinnacle wow. moment in, in in the career of of production right yeah it was also a big step big leap of faith faith right like it was like just dropping everything and moving like that right based on like just it's so this, intense right? yeah. yeah so um and at the time uh, i had my son he was like two or three right so to drop and and i was working for pepsi at the time right so oh, wow and i was so i had a good job i had a great job like and i was set in my ways i was ready to just like work for pepsi right you know raise my kid raise my family and da da lived the life that yeah but then this happened right so and this opportunity happened and my wife i give her so much credit i love her so much she was like go do it go that's follow your amazing. dreams go do what you want to do because you're going to regret if you don't yeah right that's awesome so who'd, she, who'd you marry jules clavet oh yeah that's she's, amazing she's jules general now yeah oh, yeah yeah yes yes I, I we've been together since like a long time now uh did that start in high school it started uh in 2000, what did I mean? 2003, 2003. But she went to Lakeshore. No, she didn't no? go to Lakeshore. No, she went to uh, she's French? French school. Oh, French. She is French. Oh. Yes. So she is, uh, yeah. So we, we kind of met, we met through, she raps. She used to rap. That's she still awesome. raps. She still MCs. Uh, but that was, she met me through Mike Elsich. Oh, yeah? And, yeah, because I was the producer. I was making music. She, and they came over to record stuff. And I was kind of like, ooh, who's this? You know? I love it. So that's how we connected. And A lot of music talent out in Fort Erie there, eh? Like, out yeah, here, none of, none of us have... <laughs> like, we all grew up on farms, yeah. like... But that's awesome. Oh, no, yeah. It was, so it was, huge support from her. That's key. Huge support. That was that's key. That's so key. Same with my family, too. They were kind of... Uh, they were just like, yeah, you know, if you think this is what you, you know, want to do, and if you can make a career out of it, do it, you know? I didn't have anybody saying, you should No, no, you got to stick. Key. So... Yeah. I give I give hundred percent props to everybody who was. So then you joined these guys. Yeah. So then I joined these guys in two thousand nine. So how many guys? And they're all DJs. Yeah. So three of them. There was three when I joined. So when I joined, there was four of us. But uh, things happened. The one guy had to go. You know, which was kind of sucky because it was just politics stuff, right? And right. And I was good friends with the guy they let go, and I'm still good friends with him now. But it was like. I was making the music, so I I was just like, okay, well, guys, do what you got to do. Let's just put our heads down and start making this this movement happen, because it was getting a lot of attention at the time, right away. Right. Uh, it was building up. We, we we started doing gigs outside of Ottawa. All of a sudden, you know, across Canada, flying out to Winnipeg, then Vancouver. Um, so the word was spreading about this this power step stuff. Yeah. That's happening, and we're Brand getting new. lots of coverage, lots of coverage, and in, in like media. Right from it, yeah. I remember seeing articles. Yeah, and so I'm like, man, he's tearing it up. It's I crazy, love it. man. I was surprised too. Like, it was just, it was, it was so much happening, right? Like, and I was so surprised of it too. You know, like it was just <laughs> yeah. happening so quick. Yeah, I never thought like music could get me this far, as far as it did. So, but yeah, no things happened, and then we just started killing it for the next couple of years. And so you, how long were you with them for? Uh, up until 2014, so 2009. And one, I'll tell you one thing too, because we we haven't seen each other in a while. Yeah, I remember one time I was in Banff, mm -hmm. and I remember being there and seeing that you a tribe called Red was playing, and it was like the next week, and I'm like, shit, but oh, it, yeah. it was pretty sweet. You yeah. played in Banff, right? I didn't never played in Banff with them, so it might have been oh, after. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. See, I don't know when. 
Yeah, so it might have been probably after 2014. God, mm, I, I don't know. I've been out there so many times, but I remember seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. So then you guys played a lot of shows together. What, yeah, what? we toured. We went. We were touring like across the seas. We went to Germany, Paris. Like really? Yeah, man. It was got it got huge. We started getting representation over there. You know, like so we were doing gigs in, in everywhere. You know, not so only just on Canada. Road. What's that like being on the road? Like tough, that? man. That was the big reason why I left. You know, like that was one of the main reasons because we were touring nine months out of the year. So for two years we were touring nine months. Like so, you're married. Married. I have a kid. And you're gone. And I'm gone. That's tough. It's tough, man. And like, believe it's me. It's so cool, but so tough. That's the thing. Like, as artists and musicians, if you want to succeed in the business, there's sacrifices you got to make. Huge. Right? Huge sacrifices. And a lot of people, you go and see an artist, they look they look like they're having fun, a good time, but, you know, you don't know what they're sacrificing in order to... to there's something else they could be doing. Yeah. Sure. You know, and... and wow. They're, they're, they're... You're having a good time because they're up there like letting you have a good time but like it's it comes with, with a price a hundred percent with me like i didn't get to see my son for a long time periods of time you know and and same with my wife you know so it was just like i That's would come tough. home i would be home for like two three four days and then i had to leave again for two weeks you know and it was it was crazy it was whirlwind like it's nothing prepares you for that really no i can't even yeah. imagine so it was tough, man. It was rough. And so that was one of the big decisions, you know, for me anyway, in 2014, um, when I left, I said, you know what, I got, uh, I can't be doing this anymore. Like the time is something you can't get back. Yeah, you know, like 100%. I can't get that. I can't get those hours, months, years back from James that I wasn't there for him. Yeah. You know, so I said, we had, we had a, another one on the way. So I said, there's no way I'm doing this with her. So yeah so, so then you left so I left and I said you know what I wouldn't be so worried because I produced everything you know right. I made the music so I wasn't like <laughs> I'm leaving something you know something that so I, I knew I would be okay You're I'd still ball. I'd still produce music and I still had this you know uh, I, advantage sort right. of you know you being, being a producer of a, a Juno award winning group yeah you know so I, I had I had that so yeah I wasn't too worried I mean like I wasn't as worried as Producers the backbone, no? Yeah. I, like, I don't know. Music Producers stuff. are like the, they, they, they make the music usually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what was like the biggest show you played along the way with them? Uh, the biggest or, show we, or we just, played, we played Oceaga. Um, we played, uh, we, we played a so show. So like how many people at that venue? Oceaga was 20,000. Wow. Yeah. You played in front of 20,000? We played in front of 40,000. What? In, uh. In Arizona, they, in Arizona, they had this thing called uh, the Day of the Dead uh, Parade. It's like a huge thing. And we were uh, the headlining act for this big, uh, they call it the uh, Percep or Perception of Souls Parade. So there was 40,000 people in front of us at one time. What's that like? It's intense, man. It's is that, crazy. Is it, does it change... If what if you're in front of a few hundred or a few thousand or twenty thousand, like is it a different vibe at those different levels? Like if you were to perform in front of two thousand people, yeah, and then go to forty thousand, is it? Do you feel nervous? The same nervous? Different? Believe it or not, you know what? It's less nervous. Uh, it's less nervous with more people. Really? Yeah, yeah, and f and the reason for that is that uh, you know, like when you're playing to to ten thousand people or something like that, or or a large amount of people, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> you can basically play anything you want. And they're going to just get hype and all dance together. You know, the crowd's feeding off not only you, but each other. Right. Right. So they're just like, just going anyway. You get into a small club and you're playing to 300, 400, 500 people. Right. Okay. They can get pretty picky. You know, like they're not as, you know. Right. So, they, I mean, like you got to mesh together. Yeah. So you got to kind of be careful what you play. And, and like, it's more nerve wracking for sure in a smaller crowd. Cause you yeah. Know, eh? It's harder to control. Yeah. Then, and then it's 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 funny because you wouldn't think that, right? Yeah, it's easier to control twenty thousand people. That's you know, so crazy. With music, so, but you still get nervous, man. Still nerves. It's still nerve wracking. You know, like I still get nervous whether it's ten thousand people or a hundred people. Yeah, you know? eh? still, yeah, no doubt. For sure. So just like we're, I, I've been having for the first time doing this, but tons of times I've had technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. What are some things that have happened? Uh, some uh, my the biggest thing is is uh, uh, the equipment, right? The equipment that I'm on malfunctions, 
uh, you know, like I run off of a computer. Sometimes the computer will, uh, sometimes we have gigs where it's overheated. Right. I've had gigs in like uh, Quebec during like winter lewd when we're playing on blocks of ice and my computer just goes the other way where it gets too cold, shuts down. So then what? Then you just got to say, sorry, you know, like they understand, you know, like, and then you kind of just recover with, you know, whatever you house music they have like playing or something until you can get your shit running. Cause there's nothing you can do with the elements, right? Yeah. Um, when I'm playing in hot places, I play on vinyl records, right? And it gets hot sometimes. You'll see, you'll see the friggin' record just go like this and start warping. Really? Because of the heat. Yeah. That's happened to me a couple of times where I've had to keep flipping the record, push it down until that goes up and I'm, I'm doing this. It's like I'm working with a salad bowl, you know, like right. it's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> so those are just, you got to work with the elements a lot yeah. of the time, especially in festivals and stuff like that. And then you get like, you know, half the time you, you don't get the equipment that you need. So it's just a pain in the ass, but like for the most part, you... show's always been able to go on. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Always. Cause it, it's funny. Um, the stuff I do, I've learned a lot about technical difficulties with filming, microphones, yeah. like everything. All, all kind of, when when you're creating content, you get to see yeah. what's happening. Just like this is just minor, but I've the the worst thing that ever happened to me one time. I was out doing one of my food videos at a festival, yeah. and I ran into the guy, one of the creators. Actually, I just had him on, Lucas Spinoza. It was uh, Feast Street in Welland. Mm-hmm. I had never met him. Yeah. I'm at this festival and he's one of the guys and I see him and not only do I get to put him on camera he yeah. killed it. He was really good because some people clam up, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was awesome. Yeah. And then we we look at the footage later, microphone was dead, didn't couldn't use one second of it. And oh, that yeah. was like heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. But Yeah, it happens, man. Yeah. Technology is great, but <laughs> sometimes yeah. it sneaks in, sneaks around and kicks you in the ass. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. So just before we started, I offered you some uh, Niagara Herbalist, but this is uh, yeah. Don't don't want any of that. No, I'm good because, like I said, I'll clam up. <laughs> <laughs> this interview will get really boring quick. I, but you know, you have gifts. You you know, I have gifts for you actually. What, do, what do I got? I brought something for you. You did? Yes, I did. That's amazing. Yes. Uh, Let's see what we got here. I don't, I don't even know. gotta bring my buddy some gifts. Man. I don't. I don't even know what. Yeah, I'm not sure if you it. have this or not. But this is a hard copy oh, of my. So my, sick. My EP. Sick. Um. Chub Powell stuff. And some stickers. Love it. Yeah. Yes. I've got some swag for you too. I'm and sure. uh, a Chub shirt. Oh, bro, that's so sick. That is so sick. There you go. Thanks, broski. Yeah, man. Yes. Show that up. That's so sick. I'm sure. Uh, Some merch. I love it. <laughs> I'll set that right here. Bro, that's sick. I also brought this little... Did you bring it? This little thing along. Did you bring it? Oh. Fuck, I've never seen one of these Never bad seen ones. one? Never. This is the Juno. This is the Juno. So, oh, it's legit. It's heavy. It's heavy. It's legit. It's heavier than you think. When I, remember when, was, when I was on stage to go grab it, I grabbed it with one hand and it was like, whoa. It's pretty heavy. Um, holy fuck balls. There you go. Bro, this thing is legit. Yeah? <laughs> holy moly. Bro, this is wild. Yeah? yeah? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. That's a Juno, 2014. So, everyone in the band got one. Yes. Okay, because yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bro, this They thing give you is- one on stage, but it's blank, and then they send it to you. So I got it like, you know. How much does this weigh? Oh, I don't even know. I haven't weighed it. It's like it's a good 20. Yeah, it's up there. 15, 20 pounds maybe? Yeah, bro. Bro, this is sick. Can uh, I set that right there for yeah, a bit? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's not going to cover you and that is sick. Good. Bro, I, I want I got to turn it towards me cuz I just got to look at it. <laughs> yeah. I think it says something on the bottom. I never noticed that before. Yeah. Does it say something on the bottom? Yeah, Juno Award created by Wait to Creelis and Stan Cleese. Original design by Shirley Alford. Mm. So a little shout out shout to the creators of it. Yeah. Um, Get away with yeah. puppy up here. Bro, it's so sick. <laughs> this thing six sits uh, on a shelf in my living room. I haven't, yeah? got, I haven't got 
a nice case for it yet. I'm looking to get like a nice uh, custom. What do you What do you mean case? custom case? Like yeah, you know, like a glass case with. If you know anybody who makes custom work, custom cases, custom I'm cases. Sure. Yeah, anybody listening for sure. Mm. Um. Okay, so like I, t- this is unreal. So music stuff, like I said, no talent. I appreciate music, but something I'm not really good at, Robin always busts my chops, mm-hmm. is I'd, I'm not good at following stuff like, I don't know actors' names or like stuff like that, but mm-hmm. Juno's is top award in Canada for music. Yeah. And there's different categories, right? Because I didn't even really, like I said, I don't even know what the difference between Emmys are mm-hmm. or Oscars or anything, because yeah. I'm just bad like that. I yeah. just, I don't know, I'm a... Grew up on a farm. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But this this is top awards for Canada. For Canada, yeah, for sure. If you go in the States and you mention Juno's, they have no clue what you're talking about. No. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, they won a what? You know, it's but like, there, there's different uh, categories for Juno's, right? So you break yeah. through group of the year because you guys created a new genre of music. Yeah, and, and just at the time, it just it was blowing up. Like, uh, we were just everywhere, you know. Everywhere on social media, we were yeah. everywhere. Yeah, like, I remember seeing a whole bunch of stuff. And yeah, because like, it was so sick. It just it was just super original music that's never been heard, you know, before, and it just caught everybody by surprise. And you know, not only was it um, good music, people appreciated the music, but there was culture in in it too, as well. You know, right? So, yeah, um, people love the fact, you know, that, so, that there was culture mixed into the music. Are your fans more indigenous or not, or is it a mix? It's or? a mix. It's a it's a it's a very because your music's mix. sick, so it's not just for indigenous people. Yeah. And, well, what's cool is that like there's it, it the music lets you ask questions like um, it opens up conversations like this music. You know, you you look in the audience and there could be a a, a non native a person dancing next to a native person. This non-native person might not have ever has has ever even heard of powwow music before, you know, but they're listening to it now. Mm-hmm. So it gives them a chance to say, "What kind of music is this?" You know, right? And hey, it's it's this is this is Northern Cree, and so they go check out Northern Cree. Same on the other side too, you know, the, the they might not know what electronic music is, right? You know, so they they get a mix of both, which is why it's so. Uh, easy to take in this music right because it's it's a mix of of things they're used to hearing maybe and things they're not used to hearing so okay i've been i believe to six nations it's a powwow right this is is that the party that or i i'm gonna need a little help in because i <laughs> <laughs> no problem like because i i've been i like going to have you been to the powwow in six nations before Yes. Okay, so every year they have a powwow called okay, the Grand annual. River, uh, Grand Champion, it's Grand River annual. Powwow. Yeah. It's annual, every year. Yeah. So friends of my family, my parents' friends, yeah. native, and I've been out to a couple. Yeah. And it was like when I was a kid, and it was that's why it was pretty cool ending up going to Lakeshore and having a bunch of you guys there because it, like you guys are awesome, and mm. I had been experienced the culture a little bit. That the music has got a lot of power to it. Yeah. Like, I, I remember going and just being, I don't remember, maybe eight years old, and yeah. just being like, this is amazing. And now, when I see and hear your stuff, you, you, you it is, like, it makes sense, breakthrough, because you've, yeah. you've combined the awesomeness. So, is that, that's where your music starts from, like, because I don't even understand producing. Like, you take the beats, like... I don't even know how you make this all happen. Like, it's unreal. It's magic, man. It is. I can't can't give up my recipe, man. No, that's... Like the kernel. (laughs) Uh, No, I mean, like, it's... it's, The funny thing is, when I started making... Like, there's uh, so many layers. Power step, right? Yeah. What the biggest difference... The biggest thing was, I... It felt different making power step than making hip-hop previous. Mm -hmm. Because I was a hip-hop guy making hip-hop. But as soon as I started making this power stuff, it... Everything in me changed. It was like... Right. It's, so this was music I was supposed to make my whole life, but I didn't yeah. know it. Yeah. You know, like, and this was music that it's, meant something more to me. Not only me, but this is music that uh, people that meant more to people that I was playing it to than than I could ever it's imagine. An inspiration, yeah, absolutely, yeah, man. There is one story that I tell everybody that that is is amazing. Uh, um, so I got a message from this older woman, this auntie, right? She messages me and she says, I just want to uh, reach out to you and say thank you so much for your music. She says, um, me and my niece have, uh, have, have had the greatest relationship. Um, we've kind of uh, fell apart 
Um, but for one, for her birthday, I bought her your album, and she has been listening to it, and we finally connected. We've That's been amazing. talking, and it's because of your album. That's amazing. I could have never thought something like that happens, you know. And that's the power of music. That's the power of yeah. culture. That's the power of this whole thing, that's which amazing. I love being a, like it's stuff like that, man. Yeah. That's just like you don't know that's that it's happening. A positive influence, yeah, man. Yeah. Bro, yeah. that's so sick. Yeah, it's a great story. And it's see, like, story. Okay, okay, so I've known you. I, if we go back. 20 years, maybe may probably longer, yeah. right? 25 years. You've always been a great guy. So none of this... Me too, brother. Uh, appreciate it. So <laughs> um, it doesn't surprise me that you're having a positive impact. Like this story, it, it gives me goosebumps, but it's not surprising to me because you've always been a good guy. It's not like I don't even... I can't even think of somebody that was not a good guy in high school, <laughs> but it, yeah. it's, it's awesome to see a good guy having such an influence and impact on people like that it's unreal bro thank i you. i love thank it you. yeah man i'm <laughs> like thanks bro. it's so sick thank you thank you <laughs> it, i appreciate it, it yeah it's um yeah it's 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 pretty amazing <laughs> it's pretty amazing you know just to just to be able to uh spread this this message or to spread the the love through music is yeah. fantastic you know because i wouldn't know how to do that any any other way right. like how would i how would i you know get in touch with these people like that yeah you know i there was there'd be no way for me to do that you know so music is the outlet to do that and and i can't remember exactly because like i said but you're somebody took your song and has it on the intro of a tv show or something yes so the one of the the main single off of this album is called indomitable and uh it was used for the uh theme song for this is america sasha baron cohen's uh series that just was last that happened right. last year um borat yeah yeah borat. if you don't know yeah borat <laughs> yeah so yeah he's uh it so was how did pretty, that happen uh you know what it's a crazy story it's not even really crazy so i was on vacation uh with my family i remember I, seeing this on facebook too, yeah some, yeah, and yeah i told my manager i said don't call me for two weeks man i said unless it's an emergency <laughs> unless like something's crazy don't call me sure enough he calls me like a week into it he goes i know i was supposed to call you <laughs> says but sasha baron cohen's people sought us out and asked us if they can use a song for their movie right he's like do you know Sasha Baron Cohen I'm like yeah like Borat's one of my favorite movies man I'm like a huge fan of, before that Ali G like I'm a huge fan yeah. I'm a huge fan of his right um, so I'm like absolutely absolutely whatever they want tell them yes do it for sure so so yeah I don't know how it came about I don't know how they heard the song or but they ended up coming to us that's to, so cool. Yeah, and, and asking, you know, so it's not like we went after them. Right. So I don't know how it happened, really, but it so was, it was it, worth answering that phone call on vacation. Yeah, for sure. Just, uh, so it ended up being, I thought it was going to be for a movie. Like, they said that it was just going to be music for the trailer for a movie. That's all they said. They really didn't talk about it much. Because right. you, if you remember, like, I don't know if you remember, the whole campaign was just so tightly wrapped, and it was very... Uh, they didn't say much about it. Yeah, they took a different marketing yeah. approach. Yeah, yeah. But they were smart about it, right? It was really great. So it wasn't until the premiere of the, the series, I'm sitting there, you know, we're watching this, and then all of a sudden my song is the theme song for the for the. You didn't the, even know. I didn't even know, right? I'm, I'm like, I called my manager right away. I said, dude, I said, it's the theme song <laughs> for the show. He's like, oh, he's like, what, really? And I was like, it's got to be just, just the first episode. But the next week, sure enough, boom, my song again. And I, I was flipping. I was like, this is incredible. That is sick. So then they, they got a hold of us again and said, we need we want to use it for the DVD, you know, for the menus. And then they're like, and we really love it. We would like to, to keep using you for next year. So That's cool. Yeah. They give you a piece for that? Or is that absolutely. just... Absolutely. Well, that's sick. Yeah. <laughs> I well, love I, it. That's why I'm like, yeah, I'll absolutely do anything with you guys. It's... It's I love Shasta Baron Cohen. Yeah. And uh That's and so it's showtime. Sick. Showtime. Yeah, bro. Yeah. That's so sick. So we were talking a little bit even before we hit record and talking about you don't have to when you do a gig, you don't have to set it up. You've got a manager. I don't even know. Yeah. So so, so right now I got like a, a manager who takes care of uh just like all everything business side of things. Uh I have a booking agent who takes care of uh like getting gigs like gigs come in offers and stuff like that it takes care of that and i have a tour manager as well wow so my tour manager you got is, a team together here they got a team are for these, sure are these people local 
Like they're uh, my tour manager from Hamilton. His name's Ace. Uh, he's a good guy, nice. and I love that his name's Ace. You know, it's like I used to say it all the time in high school, right? Like it's funny. Uh, and then uh, my manager's name is Eli. He's out of Toronto. Same with my booking agent. Uh, his name's Grant. He's out of Toronto as well. So, wow. Yeah. So, so I, then, how how did how does that all work? They they tell you when. Like, yeah, I just get I just get offers in. They'll tell me, hey, you know, you got an offer here. You know, do you do you like it? Do you want to do it? And sure, yeah, it looks good. And then it gets it gets d- down to my manager who works with my tour manager to make sure the routing is good. So like he can wow. take care of like uh, like flights. Bro, that's hardcore that stuff. stuff. Yeah, it's it's next. Like these are the things you got to do to get to that next level. You know, yeah. like it, it, so I can. The main reason, you know, not only just to get to that next level, but to hire these people, is so I can have. Uh, total time to have created like to create music if you're bogged down with all this other stuff like trying to like hustle for yourself you have no time for yourself and you have no time to to concentrate on what's making you big is your music right you know so it gets in the way so now hiring those people yeah it costs money yeah but it's worth an investment because you're you're now have time to create so it helps it helps grow helps yeah plus it gives me more time with my family you know if i didn't have those those guys on my team that's more time I'd have to spend doing that stuff and less time with my family. So it's so. Hard. How did you assemble that to begin with? When like was it the first thing a manager or because yeah. this is all new to me, bro. Everything is it? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I don't know. I've never yeah. been part of that or like we've never talked about this before. Yeah. It's so, it started with uh, actually um, uh, a manager. I had a the, my previous manager. His name was Alan, and he was from Winnipeg. Uh, when I, when, as soon as I left tribe, he came on, uh, he asked me if, uh, you know, you need a manager, you know, to take care of some stuff. I said, sure. So, so you, you left tribe, it I was left too tribe. much travel. Yeah. Too much travel, too much things going on. So, uh, when I left, he came on board to help me book almost, some shows. Almost right away. Almost right away. Yeah. And he reached out to you. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I knew him from previous, he worked with us when I was, a, he worked with me when I was a tribe. Right. Gotcha. So yeah, he, he came on board. Worked with me for about a year and a half. So, and let, sorry to interrupt, but so you left and were you DJ Shub before? Was that name always then? Yeah. yeah that was, that was, so when you, were you DJ Shub when you're part of a tribe called Red? Yeah. Yeah. So like DJ Shub was made up, or tribe called was made up of DJ Shub and the two other guys. Gotcha. Right? Okay, DJ, okay. DJ, yeah. okay. So, um, so when I left, you know, um, it just became Shub, DJ Shub or whatever. So. Yeah. But, which was a hard thing, I had to kind of like, I knew going out that I would have to start my own brand again. Yeah, rebranding. Rebranding, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, because the brand for Track Called Red was so huge, you know? So, I mean, it, I had it a lot easier than a lot of guys trying to do it on their own. Of course. You know? So I had kind of a jump start, a head yeah. start. So, but then I got, like I said, this manager, uh, Alan, his name was, he came on board and he was just like, how cool. you through it. Yeah, helped me through the beginnings of it. Um and then a couple of years later, about a year and a half later, you know, things started getting really, really big to the point where he couldn't handle it anymore. So he kind of passed it off. He found another manager for me and looked around and said, you know, this guy's pretty cool. He's good. Why don't you meet with him? And so I met with him. His name is Eli. This is my present manager. Nice. And met him and we just hit it off and he, he took over as manager. Yeah. yeah. And he he's the one that... Um, uh, you know, assemble this this team that I have here and, and made everything fantastic. So, did you have to run coming here by these guys? No, no. You, you, so you you have freedom to do what you yeah, want. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, as long as like you know, I got uh, that's what I love doing. You know, like I'm my own boss. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, I have freedom to kind of choose where I want to go and play if I don't like like you know if I don't want to take too much time off. And that's the biggest thing for me is I don't like to take long periods of time right. traveling anymore, right? That was the biggest thing for me in the past. I don't want to get back into that. Yeah. So I'll go away for two, uh, for three days, four days, come back home. At least I, I got to be home for at least a week for, for you know. Right. So what but it's nice. Do- I get to choose that. You know, I get to pick and choose. So what are you doing now? Uh, right now, uh, I'm taking off Well, July. At the end of June, July, August are my busy this is the busy season for DJs. It's summer festivals. I'm going out west. I got like like four weeks of, of playing and touring going on. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, so that's like right when, like when's your next gig? Uh, next gig is going to be in uh, in June, the middle of June. I'll be in uh, Toronto for North by Northeast. 
Um, and it's a free outdoor shub and grub, it's called. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so it's going to be, I have um, another couple friends who are DJing, and I have a, a guest celebrity chef, Rich Francis. He's coming to, to make some food. Oh, sick. So, yeah, and it's, it's going to be a cool outdoor um, that sounds, event. Does he make hamburgers? <laughs> I don't know. I'll make you a hamburger, I'm sure. I'll get you. You know what you need to try is a Bannock burger. You've never, if you want to rate a burger. What's that? A Bannock burger? Yeah. It's like a burger on made with, uh, it's, it, I'm not sure if it's made with like uh, venison or something, but but what makes it is there's two pieces of fry bread on both ends instead of a bun. No. Oh, it's the greatest thing ever. What? Yeah. yeah. Where can I have that? I don't know. Not around here, I don't think. Yeah, like the last time I had it, it was out in, out west. Yeah? Yeah. So you're going to be out west quite a bit this summer. Yeah. I'm actually playing uh, the Vancouver uh, Jazz Festival with Wu-Tang Clan. No, you're yeah. not. No, yeah. you're not. They're playing the same They're playing the same gig. I'm not playing with them. Yeah, but they're going to be gonna there. they're going to be there, yeah. So it's going to be pretty That's, cool. They just came out with a show or something. Yeah. Did I you just, see it? Did you watch it? I didn't watch I the have, show yet. I have not seen it either. But I, I heard it's fantastic. They just played on, I think, Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. And I'm like, what is going on? And then I think I seen like a, a commercial or something that they've yeah. got a show. I don't know if it's on HBO or what, but yeah, yeah, you're gonna get a the, series. You're gonna meet some of these guys, yeah, bro. That's crazy. That's the that's the highlight of, of like being able being in this business. You get to meet some of these freaking yeah. Like the one year, one of my favorite rappers is uh, Charlie Tuna, and he's from Jurassic Five. Jurassic Five is one of my favorite hip hop groups, and 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 I don't even know that. Man. No, no, no. He's he, uh, he's Awesome. So two years ago, two or three years ago, I got to play the Winnipeg Folk Festival, and now I, I got to play with Charlie Tuna on stage. No way. Yeah. And What's that like? Incredible, man. It was the whole time I was just, wow. What am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing here? It's crazy. You know, that's it. Feels like it's just like, and then Buffy Saint Marie. You know, like I got I got to play with her. She's a legend when it comes to like uh, the the native political music scene. Like she started the whole the thing, you know. Since she's such a legend, she's like seventy years old. And really, she is amazing. Like she is so amazing. Um, and where did that happen? That happened in Ottawa. Yeah, uh, eh? she had a show. She put on a theater show, and she called me and wanted me to join her on stage and play with her on stage and remix one of her songs. No way. Yeah. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible, man. Bro, and, that's uh, crazy. But yeah, no, it's just all these. Like, it's it's just a fantastic thing. It's just, so so. I, you must get times where like things like we've mentioned. You said yes. You sometimes you say no to stuff. Yeah, you know, right? there's like, some things that that yeah, you have to say no. Like you can't take every gig. No, no. So impossible. do you shoot down stuff? Like, would reasons be? Like maybe you don't like the venue, the people, the money. Like what would it make you say no? Your book. A lot of the times it's routing. A lot of yeah. times it's money. Most of the times it's money and routing. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, it's just not doable. You yeah. know, for me to, sometimes they want, you know, it's, it's, it's easier to route things so it doesn't cost so much in flights. You right. Because you're, I'm flying everywhere. Yeah. You know, expensive. for the most part. Yeah. So you got to be, you got to kind of figure out, is it worth, you know, a $1,200 flight here for a $4,000 gig or something like that, you know? Like, exactly. So it's things like that. Yeah. Um, so just planning it all out so it makes sense. Yes. And it's not like, you know, like... Hey, sorry, you know, we can't do it this year because of certain things, but we'd love to come back next year and route it in, you know, and try to fit it in. So it's not like we're going like, yeah, your festival sucks. I ain't do it. Right. Right. You know, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, for the most part, but that's what my team does now. They, they take, take care, care of that. that stuff. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. But yeah, you gotta, you gotta, so you don't, we don't have to get in numbers at all, but with them. I, do you pay them salaries or com, like commissions? Just, uh, yeah, I pay them uh, percentages. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. So they take percentages off each gig and stuff like that. Yeah, gotcha. See, that's uh, with me, my brokerage. That's how it works too. I pay them a uh, percentage. And, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I, I'm guessing for sure it's different, but I'll, I'll just a little bit of numbers. Like I pay forty percent to my brokerage the first sixty grand I make each year. Oh yeah, and then ten percent after. It, it's just. It's yeah. part of the part of the game. Yeah, and yeah. there's standards too in the inter entertainment business. You know, there's always the, the management standard right. percentage. You know, and all these things. So yeah, I just go by what the standard is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sweet. Yeah, bro, it's so crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it is crazy. Do you ever do a show like? Would you like? I'm not. A, do people ever ask you to do something like free, like pro bono stuff? 
Yeah, there's some. And do you ever do that? Or not, I'm not trying to promote that. I'm just trying to, because I'll tell you just where I'm coming from. People ask me to, because I do a lot of videos, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if, have you seen, you've seen some. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I get people reaching out to me on the regular for two things. Donations for all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And to do videos promoting their stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's just as of recently, like I can't, I only have so much time. Yes. So I have to say no to people. Even sure. like I just literally had one last night, a client called me over yeah. and he wants me to sponsor this event and he wants me to promote it. And I'm like, oh, I love what's going on, but yeah. I only have so much time. Totally. And I don't know if I even have the solution for what you're looking for. Yeah, that happens all the time to me, man. Yeah. It happens all the time. I feel bad. Right. You know, you feel bad because, yeah, if, if you if you had the time, I, I would help out everybody. Yeah. You know, but sometimes it's it's like, if you helped out everybody, you know, like, you got to remember at the same time, this is my job. Yeah. This is how, this is how I provide for my family. You know, if I start doing things for free all the time, how's that going to provide for my family? Exactly. You know, like my family comes first. My, yeah. So hundred um, percent. When I can, if I have time to do something like that and it works out, sure. I'd mm-hmm. love to help out, you know, like I love to do things to help people out, but it's, you know, some people take advantage of you, you know? Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's like gotta I be can careful. only imagine because you've been in the limelight for a while here and with my stuff, like I'm, I'm a realtor, but I do so much content that I, I get reached out now for some stuff Yeah. and just on a small level, I'm trying to think like you're, you're a worldwide brand. Mm. So you get, I can't even imagine the different things. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. and that's why I really appreciate you even coming here because you, mm-hmm. you could have told me to screw off. No, no problem. Oh, no, no. Yeah. But like having, having a team, having a management team and a booking t- team really helps take care of those yeah. kind of things, you know? Exactly. Cause there are people that try to, you know, take advantage and say, Hey, you know, you know, l- let me get him up here for this much, you know? And they, they won't. And it's just, Yeah. Yeah, I used to have to deal with that on my own. Yeah, you know, and it felt bad saying no to people when you know, like. But now it's they they handle they it. can say no to people. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know, it's like they can go through them first before. So it's. Do you ever do any stuff like the? Has like gift or anybody ever reach out to you to like do yeah. a talk and stuff or something? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember GIF had me out to Lakeshore the one time to, to DJ a, yeah. a, a par, uh, for for the kids there. Yeah, and that was yeah. pretty funny. He told it was me like about a, that. a Gator rave. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, he mentioned that. That's yeah, it was sick. fantastic, and I, I loved that. That was awesome. Yeah, you know, going back to Lakeshore. And I it was, was yeah, it was great. I was just talking to him through text yesterday because I asked him if he'd come on here. And he said, Is for he, sure. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. I'd love went, to see I'm, that. I can't wait to see that. I, I don't even know. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> GIF is one of my favorite teachers yeah. uh, ever, you know? And and it's, yeah, that would be a fantastic podcast for sure. Yeah. He's uh, at St. Mike's now. Yeah. Uh, I think St. Mike's. He's in the falls. Anyway, he was at Lakeshore there for a bit, but now. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> Bro, this is so sick. Yeah. Um, what else? What else? What other kind of stuff? I was thinking of some stuff while we were just talking. We got to go have a hamburger together sometime, man. Yeah, we do. For sure. Yeah. Let me know when that. you're in the area, like my area. Because I noticed you're going, you go all over, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, Fort Erie. I haven't, I've only done MJ's so far. Just MJ's. But where, yeah. where's a good spot in Fort Erie to grab one? Um, Green Acres. I don't even know what that is. Oh. <laughs> yeah? Try Green Acres. Yeah, they're, they're famous for their fish and chips. Like yeah. if you like fish and chips, but their burgers are fantastic as well. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Fort Erie's got a bunch of good places. It's the, Fort Erie's a good spot. Like we only went out so often because yeah. it's such a hike. But you got good stuff going on. Yeah, it is there. a hike for sure. Yeah. But yeah, next time you're on the area and you're going to test out some burgers, <laughs> if I'm home, up. man, hit me up. I'll come. Yeah. I'll come have hamburgers. I love it. I yeah, love man. it. Uh, what else? What else? I'm trying to think. Uh, what else Some other happening? stuff. You've just been killing it so long. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what are, like some things in the pipeline? Yeah, there's. I can't really talk too much about it. Oh, I love it. Um, but like, there are some pretty big things happening pretty soon. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. In the next couple of years, there's definitely going to be some big. There's big movements happening, and it's gonna. It's gonna take about a year or two to get to. Yeah. These big things happening, but you'll. 
You'll it's know. happening. It's happening. Things Bro, happenings, happenings, it. man. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Can't go into detail about it right now. Yeah, it's but, cool. uh, I'm I'm happy to see yeah. it. And you're living in Fort Erie. Living in Fort Erie. Yeah. And been Fort Erie. So even all the traveling, you've been in Fort Erie the whole time, yeah? Lived in lived in Ottawa for about seven years. Oh, Ottawa. Yeah, so like that, that time that whole Oh yeah, down, right. I moved up there. Moved the fam you up were there. Straight up in there. Straight up in Ottawa for I love Ottawa. I've met so many good people in Ottawa. It was it was such a good time. It was such a fantastic time because it was actually when I moved there, it was the first time I DJ'd like uh, like when I first moved there, I didn't have a job really, mm-hmm. right? So my my good friend hooked me up with um, it's the first time I had gigs at bars like four nights a week. So right. I was like a, I was a playing DJ for four nights a week up there and I was making the most money I've made, you know, in a while just by DJing. It That's amazing. Fun. That's amazing. It was fun times, man. So, and, and then I was doing that until things started picking up with Tribe and then we just started touring, you know, so then, then I stopped that. But I was, I was living in Ottawa for like seven years, a good seven years. What's that like living there? Good. I liked Ottawa because it was, it was, it's, it's not, it's a nice, uh, it's a good sized city. You know, for me, right. like Toronto's crazy huge. It's just too much city for me. Ottawa was nice because it was just enough city. <laughs> I always tell everybody, you know, like it, <laughs> it had its, it had its downtown. It was good, but you didn't have to go far to get to like a, a nice rural area. You know, right. and that's what I loved about it. It was fantastic, that's... and the scene was cool too. I liked the music scene up there. It was great. It, a lot of it put the people up there, the DJs up there. They put me on to a lot of different kind of music styles, and it was great. I loved it up there. See, I haven't spent much time there. I, no. I remember going on a high school trip there. Yeah. We spent a few days there, whatever. Yeah. And, but I haven't spent a lot of time up in Ottawa. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got to go back up. I got a, a gig there on uh, July 1st for Canada Day. So how far in advance do you book oh, Canada Day? Yeah. And that's sick. Yeah. Yeah, we book sometimes. Like I had, I had, you book probably like four or five months in advance six months advance sometimes for these bigger festivals they like to big festivals like to get you like yeah. half a year in you know yeah. just to make sure that they're locked yeah so then when you're not are you do you still practice lots not so much I mean like sometimes you're if, in the I'll group. practice I'll practice for like if there's a specific thing coming up but for the most part my like I'll make my my set because usually when I play it's 90 minutes it's usually only 90 minutes I play only sometimes an hour but usually it's an hour and a half right you so, say only that's yeah. a long time to be performing yeah well so, well when i was djing at clubs i was playing from 10 to 2 you know 4 hours like i was playing for that's so crazy yeah. but now it's like yeah usually it's only okay so 90 no, minutes isn't 90 so minutes bad. set yeah so 60 minutes not so bad yeah so i'll make my 90 minute set at home and that's the set that i use at gigs all over the place Right, so it's kind of like it's already. It's yeah, a, you know it's what's a, going on. I know what's happening all the time. You're, yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. bro, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, man. It's good Cheers. to see you, man. You're Cheers. killing it too. Like you're doing your thing. Yeah. You know, it's it's. Uh, Son House is making some content. Yeah, Just, man. Yeah, giving her. Heck yeah. <laughs> uh, you bought a house recently. Bought a house yet? Um, looking, we're looking to move somewhere nice up here, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I, no, we're we're you know like it's it's a nice house, but we we want more land. Yeah, you know, it's this we don't we don't have enough. My wife especially, she loves big big yards, big you know. And we don't have that right now. So, so. are you coming to Wingfleet? I don't know, man. I it just see it's it's a short drive to where my my mom lives down in Six Nations. You know, like um, so I mean Wingfleet's like it's closer. Yeah, yeah. We so got I mean, you guys, ton, there's tons of land here. We just driving land. down here was nice and beautiful right. man that's great Bro, i'm wingfleet through and through yeah. i love it here yeah. I, it's, this is born raised living dying here yeah. i have, literally have my plot <laughs> in the Already? cemetery yeah wow. nice. so like it, it's it's going all going down here awesome yeah man that's that's great out here so yeah uh, she, my wife wants to be by the lake by the river or the lake or something she Some wants water. to we, we've always been close to water like right yeah. now we live like five houses from the the river niagara river so nice Water's always played a big part. Yeah, water's good. I water's mean, good. We've got Lake Erie and we've got the Welland River. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and if we can't be by a, a river, then I'm just going to get a big-ass pool. 
That's, <laughs> or or you could do a pond. Like my, I don't know if you see my neighbor's yeah, yeah, huge with the, pond. With the fountain. Yeah, like we go swimming in there. It's uh, I don't know. It's not uh, natural body water. You go we, swimming in that pond? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. He's, it's there's I haven't been yet, but there's the neighbors that live right over there. They've already gone swimming in it this year. That's crazy. But <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like seventeen. That's, but wow. yeah. Fantastic. What else? What else, bro? Like, uh, do you want to talk about that at all? Um, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what else is going on. Um, yeah, just working. I've been working on um, my new, like, I have my album. Like, my new album is finished. It's like, but it's just waiting for, like I said, stuff I can't talk about. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I, so, I, 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 how I many albums created, have you done? Uh, okay. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, well, I just recently created my own record label, which is cool. Oh wow! Yeah, so my, my first uh, my first release under Shub Record, Shub Music, it's called Shub Music, was uh, not too long ago uh, at the Junos this year. I played I played the after parties and the official parties for the Juno Awards this year in London. Wow! And that's when I released uh, the first my first single on on Shub Music. Bro, that's so and sick! It's, it's featuring a, a rapper from Toronto called Cadence Weapon. And it's called Superhero, so if you ever check it out, it's uh, yes. it's on Spotify, it's on iTunes and all that good stuff. Yes. So check that out. Um, so, okay, you, you, you have to help me still, because all <laughs> this music stuff is new. So, a label, what does that even mean? Like, th- this is... Well, creating a label is a lot different than back in the day. Um, like, the reason why I created my own label is just so I can have 100% control over my music. Yeah, it's awesome. Usually, you, you sign with a label or anything like that, you, you lose you lose control of your music. Your creativity is you not... You sign away some of your stuff, right? And nowadays, for artists, um, a lot of these big labels, what they do for you, you can do yourself now. Through right. social media, right. uh, through the right people, you know, you can get things done on your own now without having to give up your music. Yeah. You know, a percentage of your music, you know. Internet's so, a wonderful thing. Oh, absolutely. It's changed the game. Yeah. You know, so for an independent artist to have his own label and to own his own shit, now he can, you know, he can get a distributor to distribute your music, right? But you still right. own a hundred percent of your your stuff. That's amazing. So that's that's the main reason. A lot of artists have been doing that these days, you know, creating their own label and releasing. So there's no restrictions, nobody telling you what you can do, can't no. do. Exactly. Exactly. You and you own everything yourself. So and then okay, this rapper's a new guy. He's been no, he's 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 been around. He's been for around a long time. So how do you know him? Uh, just through. Uh, I played a couple of gigs with him before. Uh, we met in uh, this last time we met was in Halifax for the Halifax Pop Explosion Festival. Sick. We had a show uh, on the same stage, and we were backstage, and we were just like, man, let's do something together. You know, like it's been a long time. I've known him for a while, and I said, let's just do something. He goes, I would love to. Send me something. So it was something that easy. I sent him a song over the internet, sent him an email over the internet. I said, yeah. <laughs> I sent him an email, right, with the track, and then uh, he heard it, and within 24 hours, he came back with all his lyrics on it. And no way. And killed it. Yeah, it so good. And then we released it like two weeks later. Wow. Yeah, man. I, when we're done, you got to show up? Or, yeah. Yeah. Like, I want to see this stuff. Bro, you got so many sick things. Thanks, man. I'm trying. You know, I'm really trying. It's uh, it's been a it's been a rough road. It's been a long, rough road. You know, it's been a long time coming. But uh, persistence, man. Yeah, you, persistence. You just gotta stick that, with that's it. That's that's the key. That's and support. You gotta have people that you gotta surround yourself with positive people, man. That that that. This is the support. The, you. This is the recipe. Because uh, I'll, I'll tie in, I'll, I'll take over a little bit of stuff. You've been <laughs> yeah. killing it. With me, in my industry, uh, it's about, uh, I thought it was the 80-20 rule. This is something GIF I remember talking about back in high school. Mm. That 20% of people will do 80% of the work. And in my industry, it was I thought it was something like that. But i recently been talking to some uh, realtors that are on like boards and stuff. And they say it's like 10% of realtors do 90% of the work. And like my successes as a realtor, I just, I, like we talked about, I yeah. love what I do. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and tell you, I don't think any, it's not like I love every aspect of what I do mm-hmm. right now in this moment. I'm not getting paid for this, but I love this. Yeah. This is all contributing to like my marketing branding. We're working together. 
but there's about 10% of us doing a lot of work and it's just grinding it out and mm. day to day persistence. Like, am I better or not, not better than other people in my industry? I don't know, but every day I wake up and I'm myself, I'm literally working before my feet hit the ground because I grab my phone to see what time it is. Yeah. And I got texts and emails and maybe a call to respond to mm-hmm. and, and just on the grind. But the, you're talking about that. You just the road. You just keep giving her. Mm-hmm. And yes, I, myself, too. I've got a wife that supports it. I got a family that's key friends because yeah. without that, it's tough. It's yeah. tough with that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> It's tough with that for sure, but <laughs> having the support yeah. know, is definitely key, you know, persistence too, like I said. Do you think our high school built some of this too? Because I, I feel like Lakeshore was a great spot where I don't, I, I didn't feel like I felt our teachers and like GIF, you know, GIF and yeah. other people, it was supportive there too. I didn't feel like anybody there was trying to hold us down or slow us down like that. No. I think like uh, outside of just getting being being a little badass you know but yeah. like the, yeah for we the got most some part, trouble but yeah for the most part <laughs> you know everybody there was was like personally for me all these teachers that i met there like gif and and uh mr jigurski remember that guy remember him Are you, the name i remember uh, what was he he was in the tech department you know like yeah these these are all people that um uh just were so supportive of whatever you wanted to do yeah. and they would knock you back in line if you got out of hand yeah. you know and that's what in life that's what needs to happen yeah. you know like if, you, if we didn't have that fuck we'd be a mess man we'd be still in the smoke pit <laughs> no go so, did you get suspended at all there yeah yeah for sure yeah. absolutely I got suspended how, how many uh, I know for sure once yeah yeah <laughs> and I deserve it because I was a little bad I was, it was you know totally we had fault. a lot of fun Totally. Yeah. Like you, it's to tie back a little bit to high school, like you guys in Fort Erie, we out here, because I, I hung out with Den Besson a lot, yeah. right? And we were out here. But every once in a while, you know, we were we were partying, you guys were partying, we all party. Oh, yeah. We good. have some good shakers, yeah. man. For sure. <laughs> we used to love, like, that was, that was the best part about, you know. Well, for me, like, I came from, uh, like, a different grade school. I didn't come from a Catholic grade school. So when I left grade oh, eight, yeah. when I left grade eight, all my friends from grade school, they went to like a public high school. Fest. Fest. They went to yeah. Fest, right? And I was a lone wolf that went to Lakeshore. How come? Because they had lacrosse. Ah. Oh. So I was like, okay, I want to go play lacrosse, man. So I took the, the leap of faith again to go. I didn't know a single person. Wow. You know? So and that's that's when I lied to everybody and told everybody I worked for PlayStation. That's how I got friends, man. Was that the story in Grade <laughs> that was Nine? The story in Grade Nine. If you ask any of my buddies, they're all, they, they all know. They're like, "Oh, PlayStation, yeah, okay." But that's you know, like I, I didn't have any anybody, you know. And so I was like, "Okay, well, I'll no, make some no shit relatives up. at school." No, nothing. I didn't, I didn't know be- a single be- person because it wasn't until the next year that like uh, Kalen, Mike Longboat, and like yeah. all my uh, all my like my cousins and my friends, they came for lacrosse too as well. But it was that first year oh. I was there. I wasn't. So yeah, so those you're related to. Kalen. Yeah, Kalen. Kalen Ben is my cousin. He's, gotcha. Yeah, so... See, th- this is something I never knew because, first of all, I'll just to tie in some indigenous stuff. Yeah. I only knew, like, the Martins, Larry Martin. That was... Then when I came yeah. to high school, and when I was there, all you guys were awesome because we played football. Yeah. I always loved you guys. You probably don't even know, and I don't even know what it means or not, but Trav one time made me honorary <laughs> when we were playing some drinking game. Yeah, because... Yeah. I always loved you guys because you guys are like down to earth. I, I don't know if I'm being racist by complimenting, but like I got along so great with all you guys. Yeah. And, but I never knew who was related yeah. other than Trav and like Blue and Shannon because mm-hmm. they're all hills. But yeah. I didn't I didn't know who was related or not, and I never assumed. Or, but I didn't know that mm-hmm. Kalen. Kalen was my actually my actual cousin. But you know, like Justin Justin Hill. Yeah. We always say he's his cousin because he's like because a lot of a lot of natives we have like oh he's my cuz yeah you know? like and he's like Justin we're not blood but like our f- both our dads like our families grew up together Tight. you know so we can just consider ourselves cousins yeah but he was another one that came to Lakeshore you know that um, but yeah it was it was and a rough Dakota is your cousin Dakota's my actual cousin yeah yeah um, but yeah it was that first that first year when there was nobody like I you know you it wasn't solo. until it wasn't until the, the second or third years when. You wow, know, all those guys came. So, and you were so you were there. 
You came straight. Straight, man. Bro, that's so crazy. Just to play lacrosse. Because I was playing lacrosse at the time, and, and that was the only school that offered it around here. And lacrosse isn't played until, like, in the, like later. Yeah. Did you play football grade nine? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Played football. With, I, with I remember I remember the when I came in for, the, like, orientation, like, the first time, Gifford saw me, right? And he go and he grabbed me, grabbed me, goes, you're playing football. You know, like, I didn't even know, I didn't know at the time, right? And he goes, oh, look at the size of you. He goes, you're playing. So he got me right away, right? And, like, and that was, like, Mr. Carter and... and yeah, Wittered. And, and Wittered, yeah. Yeah. You know, that was... That was awesome. That was great. And that's when I got to meet so many other guys, too, in, in football. And sports has played a huge role Same, in, in who I am, especially. And, 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 and my persistence, you know? Like, they really, like, Lakeshore had a great, great sports teams, man. Yeah. So, and, and that's why I like seeing that you got your son playing football already, yeah. too. Because when this is something, too, I, I don't talk about this a ton because different people. But I wear... I learned a lot too through sports because you learn a ton of football. Tons. Football is amazing. Yeah, it's discipline. Uh, it teaches you discipline. It teaches teamwork. Teamwork. Yeah. Okay, you were. Did you ever play running back, or were you always on the line? I was running back uh, in grade nine. I was a it, fullback in grade nine. Yeah, because I remember you handling the ball too. But yeah, because what I I haven't had a conversation like this with people in a long time. But football. If there's 10 or 11 of us on the field, yeah. one guy takes a play off, it can screw up the whole play for yeah. everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it could get messy quick. Yeah, just from one guy. Nine guys could be doing it perfect. One yeah. guy, like me, on center, if I don't block the guy coming through, right. tackles the quarterback, play it, right? Like, teamwork is key. Key, for sure. Yeah. But, and that plays on in life, man. Yeah, exactly. Teamwork you is key in these life. Things. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Practice. Like, you're talking about practice, and I'm thinking of us running cold <laughs> crab <that> rocks. <laughs> that friggin' run. I remember grade nine, uh, playing lacrosse, uh, Corey Annett showed me the secret to running. Because, <laughs> you nice know, like, and light. nice and light and short. Like, the the, <laughs> the, the the short baby steps, but but he goes, keep your arms like this going, right? Because from a distance, it looks like you're running pretty fast, but you're not really. You know, you're just getting around that that uh, that big field. So, I, I taught me a lot. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, I remember that, sure. too. That I don't even know what we called that. Brandon Adams, too. We used to do the same thing. Just keep the arms yeah. pumping. As long as the top looks like it's going, man, you know, the feet can just do little... But that's how I survived that. So, did you play lacrosse all the way through at Lakeshore? Yeah. Uh, I quit one year halfway through. Um, but, yeah, for every other year I was. I and then football? Football, I skipped a year. Skipped a year, but played otherwise. Yeah, I played right. Uh, I think it was grade, ele- uh, grade 11 I skipped. Did you go to OAC? Yes. So, OAC year... You, we played that game against Notre Dame in the finals and got crushed. Yes. 42 nothing. Yeah. That was a heartbreaker. That was a heartbreaker, for sure. That game... Do you remember that game? Mm-hmm. I remember that game. I wanted to win that for you guys more than anything, because you guys were one grade older. Yeah. And through football, like guys like... You, Dembeson, yeah. Boyko. Boyko. Remember Boyko? Yeah. The Tambo. Uh, yeah. Uh, Boyko was an amazing running back. Oh, my Boyko, gosh. Boyko... He was one of the guys because um, from Dunville, late bus. Ozog. Ozog, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> big, big, uh, what you would call it? Uh, Osborne? Yeah, Liquid Steel. Liquid Steel? Yeah. He's a monster now. You see yeah. him? Yeah. Jesus. He's jacked. He's jacked. Jacked. Man, I remember that. Do you remember Do you remember the taco? The taco challenge we did? The hot ones? When, or... we, when we sent... We sent Big O to go get like 100 tacos from Taco Bell. Remember that? And we ate a bunch. We ate them all. Yeah. Right before practice and they got so pissed at us. They're like, what are you doing eating tacos before practice? Because we're all full. We're all just sick. Yeah, oh, hilarious. man. That was funny. That's good hilarious. times, man. Yeah, good, that was. Good times. That game was tough, though. That last game, Notre Dame, 42 nothing. It was. I think I, I, I got. I think I got. I don't, I, don't, I don't think I played all that game. Well, that was a tough game. Yeah. But that one, that one hurt me. That one still scars me because I wanted to win so bad for you guys, because it was your guys' last game. Yeah. And played with all you guys all the way four years or whatever. I'm like, I want these guys to go out. And then not only did we lose, we it. got yeah, we got smashed. smoked, man. <laughs> yeah, we got smoked. So your son now plays. What position does yeah. he? Yeah. Um, well, right now it's this is like the second game. He's oh. kind of they kind of got him. 
all over the place, really. Um, they got him on both offense and defense. Um, tight end, he's playing on offense, and a defensive end, he's playing. Uh, but he's, they're not really sure because he's this right. He's a, he's small and he's fast. He's not huge because he's playing with like thirteen uh, year olds, right? And he's eleven. Yeah. So there's some big boy. There's a couple of big boys on the team, and so, but he's you know, he can play anything really. It's so just, he's, he's still figuring he's quick, it out. He's still trying to figure out what he wants yeah. to play. Yeah. What number did you wear? Was it sixty six? Uh, I'm trying oh, to man, remember. I can't even remember. Yeah, that. I remember wearing sixty seven because we were on the line together. Yeah. You played guard. Yep. I remember. Yep. It's so sick that you got him playing now. Yeah, I love it, man. I love it. Like it's, I, it's great. Sundays, every Sundays are games. Um, yeah, it's fantastic, man. It's great. <laughs> and he's eleven. Yeah, so and he's into it. This is. I try to get him into like I try to get him into hockey. Try to get him into uh, uh, ba- uh, baseball too. He's he's playing baseball this year as well. But but football is he loves it, and I love that he loves football. It's great. He's excited to play every year, and that's key. Mm-hmm. So is he gonna go to Fest or Lakeshore? Uh, I ask him about it. Like he wants to go to because his cousins, um, my nephews, they they all go. Like he, my oldest nephew goes to the Garrison Road. Or sorry, G Fest, they call it now. Is that what it's called now? G Fest, yeah. G Fest. It's like Greater Fort Erie Secondary School. So they oh, they combined okay. like uh, a bunch of high schools in in oh. the Fort Erie area to one. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So and they got a brand new school, brand nice new. field, like a yeah. nice. Really and they nice play field. football there. They play football there, so. so it's a good chance he's gonna go there. Yeah, I think so. I keep bugging him. I'm like, you gotta, you gotta go, you know, fulfill the legacy of Lakeshore, man. I said you're gonna get there. They're gonna have the carpet rolled up for you already. Yeah, uh, you know your locker. You can make sure you get this one underneath the stairs. <laughs> you know, so stairs I keep bugging him. Spot. Yeah, always no, that's the best spot. <laughs> <laughs> for reasons unknown, it's just good real estate. It's good real estate. You know that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, but I, yeah, I, I bug him, but like he can go wherever he wants. Yeah. You know? So but it's looking like. G-Fest but it's looking West. like he wants to go where his cousins are. Yeah. His cousins, because his 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 cousin uh, is like around the same age as him, so they'll be going through high school together. I'm sure. And yeah. Hopefully he gets. See, there's no lacrosse there, but he's not a lacrosse player. I don't All know right. if he'll get into it. You know, like he he see he missed out this year. His his uh, my nephew plays, and so we'll see. Yeah. We'll see what happens, Bro, it's man. So sick. You see, yeah. I, I just got married. I haven't started the kid game yet. You're when you walked in, you were talking about that how some of the friends are having kids and now. Yeah, you, you started a little bit earlier. I started earlier. Yeah, yeah, man, I started really early. Yeah, and it was good. Now I'm just waiting around for all the other my buddies that you know. <laughs> to get, so, but it's good, man. Yeah, I wouldn't trade it in for anything, man. Kids yeah. are the best. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, they keep you grounded. <laughs> yeah, expensive uh, as hell, though, man. Kids, holy. Yeah, I don't doubt it. That's that's one of the scary things about doing it. Daycare, all that stuff. Expensive, but it's worth it. Yeah, well, you got end, you got to do it. Yeah, I I'm a, just married, so how long have you been married for? September, so it's like nine eight months. Wow, fresh. Congrats, man. Mm-hmm. Thanks. It's actually I was. Uh, like through high school and stuff, I never was really thinking about getting married like that. But yeah. now being married, it's actually really nice. Nice. It's a, it's a good thing. She hasn't thrown me out of here yet, which is nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a good start. Yeah. 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 So far, so good. Awesome. Yeah, bro. I, I don't even know. Like, I, I feel like there's uh, tons of stuff we could talk about, but I don't even know. I don't even know. Yeah. Maybe maybe we'll wait for part two of the podcast to, yeah. to, to fit to... Uh, Get to the other stuff. Maybe with do oh, with Doobie. Yeah. yeah. I was just saying, uh, a good way I think to kind of wrap this up is, you have said, and I, I don't want you to say anything you don't want to say, mm-hmm. as you said you got some things coming. But what can you say <laughs> with it? Like you said that so it's taking some time for something. Yeah. Or well, we. How do I know this is happening? Yeah. Um. I don't. I, I don't want to put you like it to say something you don't. Yeah. No. 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 Um, we've recently. I've recently partnered with uh, a company, a pretty big company, when it comes to uh, uh, visuals. Um, basically, what's like going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huge trip coming up soon. Yeah. Huge trips. 
Uh, but no, I, I'm going to be re- working uh, with uh, with a company that um, when it comes to uh, visuals, like uh, uh, visual displays and, and sick. Yeah, so th- so I'm working on getting uh, my next big step here is going to be a, like a traveling uh, theater show. Basically, it's wow. going to be it's going to be like an installment, um, which involves um, live acts, visuals. And, really and yeah and it's gonna so be more with, with my music so, so it's gonna be like a whole experience type thing going exactly on. it's gonna be an ex- the experience it's gonna be crazy and that's why i said it's gonna it's gonna be around a couple years until this thing is finished and, and ready to go but this thing is gonna be it's in the works yeah it's in the works it's it's in the it's in the beginning works of it um and this thing is gonna be it's tra- gonna be here all over the place it's gonna be all over the place where will i get to see it probably toronto would be the closest it would come around here. I've never seen Maybe you play Hamilton, live, but Toronto. I've never seen you play live, and I'd love to. Yeah, man, you should come out to that uh, the show, that barbecue, the shove and yeah. grub. Yeah, uh, it should be fun. That's coming up June twenty first or twenty sixth. Yeah, I got it. I'll double check and I'll I'll let you know. Yeah, but and you should come out Tor- to that. That's in Toronto. Yeah, that's, and that's, that's like a be, Saturday or something. I think it's a Friday. 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 Mm-hmm. I, I play baseball, but I was oh, I man. can sacrifice one. I think it's from like six to eight. Yeah, it's right prime time baseball oh, time. Man. But it's all good. I can't. I can't. I can't. Yeah, we play slow pitch and wait for you. Wait, if you ever move to Wingfield, you'll be on the. Uh, I love to be on the team. I yeah. love baseball. I love playing. Yeah, I wanted play to play this year. Uh, my friend Chris Dewey plays yeah. for plays a uh, softball. Yeah. Yeah. We play Wingfield. It's co-ed slow pitch. Nice. Like I think it's like I don't know what level we are, but it's low beer league, but it's fun. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, that's what it's all about, man. Yeah, I can't get serious about sports at my age. <laughs> yeah, it's a, but I, I got a dad body, man. Like I, I can only do I. That's what I do is have fun playing sports now. I can't get serious. Yeah, well, it's a good time. I would definitely miss a game to come see that because I've out of all these times I've. I've seen like some. I'm like I. I would love to see yeah. him live. It just has. There's happened. also going to be CD release parties for the menu album. So I've been working on this new album. It's finished. Like I said, there's some little things that get done, but it's pretty much almost finished. Yeah. Um, that's going to be uh, released soon. On you don't know when yet. Uh, I kind of do, but I can't say. Gotcha. Um, but it's it's. But we're going to be doing um, a CD release party for it across Canada. So they're going to be yeah like in, in the major cities. Yeah, for like so Toronto. So Toronto. I, I want to try to do one like hometown around here somewhere that would be so That'd sick be cool. and then okay, yeah i'll so go like to that 100 percent. winnipeg calgary vancouver and that's coming up that'll be probably the the record will probably release midsummer so it's it, it's looking probably end of summer maybe that tour happens. can you tell me about the album like how many tracks like uh right now it's 21 tracks wow yeah and it's a it's, big one it's a big one it's a, it's my first full length so like this one here it was just an ep it's only got six See, um, EP, these are terms I don't even know. EP is, is usually, <laughs> EPs are, are like, short releases that only have like uh, a small number of tracks on it. Um, uh, an LP, a long, like, a, like an actual oh. LP is like a, a full album, like 12, See, or 12 or more. Yeah, I was going to say you know, 21 like, almost seems like a double disc. Yeah, 21 is a lot. Some of, some of the songs are only like a minute and a half long, uh, but like for the most part it's, it's 21, it's, and it's. 21 bangers man yeah <laughs> that's so sick. so we're gonna be doing like there's gonna be music videos gonna be wow. shots for the singles and stuff like that and yeah there's yeah, gonna see, be a lot of stuff happening for for but, this year's for music yeah now now that we're fired back up but i've seen like some of your videos online have millions of views yeah the Bro, indomitable that, one got got uh it's like million and a half right now yeah that's wild man. yeah like i get like you know thousands or whatever and like see that that's wild. It's it's taken a while to get to a million, but yeah, I mean like of it's, course. it's uh it definitely when when it was on that show that bumped the numbers up like crazy. You know when I was on the, the yeah. This is America yeah because people would go you know on to check it out on YouTube and yeah that bumped the numbers up huge. Do you, do you get people like randomly adding you and trying yep. to and how's that? Because I get that too and like I'm just. It's, I mean, for the most part, I could, you know, you get some mm-hmm. crazies that try to like, yeah. you know, well, whatever. It's, it's, bound, to, it's bound stuff. to happen. Our stuff is out there for everyone. Yeah. You know, and yeah, so you're bound to get some crazy stuff. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Know? But there's good stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's majority of it's good. Yeah. You yeah. Know? For sure. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, is there haters? Tons. There's always. How could anybody yeah. hate? Because you know what it is. Half the time they don't understand. Like a lot of the times, it's ignorance. It's not really hatred. Like they don't just know. They don't know anything, right? They don't. They haven't been taught. Like a lot of the times, it's like, oh, that screaming is garbage. What, what kind of music is that? Like they're oh, referring to the powwow stuff, right? So, but a lot of the times, they're not even taught that. They don't even know what's happening. They don't know, you know, where this music comes from or what what it yeah, says origin, and everything like yeah. that. Yeah. Once you know, once you learn that sort of thing, it's beautiful, right? Yeah. Um, See, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. So, but but right away, you'll get like, you know, you'll get people that are ignorant. I I say ignorant because they just don't know anything. Yeah. Exactly. Right. It's not their fault. So, how do you handle that? Do you just brush it off, or do you say no, anything? No, let, I let I let other people say. Like it, that's what's the beauty about the comments is I don't really have to say anything anymore. People will say it for me. Right. Like if you get somebody who hates it, like especially on YouTube, you know, if I'm having a bad day or something like that, I go on YouTube and I I read the comments. Yeah. On on, on Indomitable, yeah, because it's funny because people will, people will, they'll have people that say stuff like that, but then you'll have people that chime in. Right and and point them in the right direction. point them in the right direction. I, I love that. That's great. Yeah. I don't have to say a single word. Yeah, it's fantastic. See, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even think because what you're doing is so awesome. I wouldn't even think that there's haters. Mm -hmm. But there's. I guess there always is with anything. Sure. Because I. I just. I get. It. I get mostly positive stuff too. But every once in a while, I just read one. Just I think last night somebody. It's one of the things I. I ripped off the line from. Uh, I don't know. Have you ever seen the pizza reviews that I, I'm kind of mimicking? There's no. a guy in New York City that does pizza reviews. Oh, and yeah. His line is one bite, everybody knows the rules. So I jacked oh, that. Oh, that's not even mine, not that yeah. line. And somebody wrote just on one of my comments, I want to punch you in the face every time you say that because you take like eight <laughs> bites after you yeah, say man, it. It's, it's, and I'm like, really? I'm like, this is. You got to see, you know, like my good friend Matty. Yeah. Madison. You got to see, like, you talk about haters, man. Yeah, because you know, like, he's out there. Oh, yeah. He's, he's friggin'. Famous. How, that guy's famous. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. How does he handle that stuff? He just brush it off? He just brushes it off. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, because he he's out there. Yeah. And he's got a, a bold personality. So yeah. there's for sure going to be haters. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we think we get a lot of haters. He's, you know, he gets probably tons. You know? Yeah, tons. But uh, he's learned to deal with it, you know, in his own way. Yeah. Makes fun of him usually. <laughs> he's awesome. He, how, how is he doing? He's doing good. Good yeah. man. Yeah, he's doing really good. I he's on tour him. somewhere right now in the states. Um, I just seen him at, uh, at a, a diaper party we had for Chris Doobie. Nice. Yeah. Oh, Doobie's. Doobie's expecting. Wow. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's gonna be a dad. Nice. Soon, but uh, we had a, all the guys at the diaper party for him, and Maddie was there, and nice. it was a good chance to hang out with all the old friends again. You know, we hardly, like I said, we're so busy with our families now yeah. and, and our careers. It's like we hardly get to yeah. hang out again. Yeah. So it's whenever we get that chance like that, it's it's good times. See, every once in a while, just like you, I exchange a, mes a message with Maddie, but it's been a while since I've talked to him because he, mm -hmm. he's got a lot going on too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, I, I, I like his line. One of the lines in his stuff is the most famous chef in the world. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, when I see that, you know what it rings back to me is when... We were at Lakeshore, and Croco used to say "world famous Lakeshore." Yeah, <laughs> and I just remember being like, uh, "Like we're just Lakeshore," but yeah. now it like with Maddie, I'm like, "It, it ran, rhymes yeah. true." Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sick. Well, bro, this has been sick. I don't know. I I love it. I really appreciate yeah, you man. coming out. I appreciate you inviting me out. Yeah, you know, uh, I wanted to get involved somehow. Like well, I love what you're doing. I, I'm, a, you know, musty Mondays. I was, I always watched and and your awesome. burger reviews, you know. So when so, I knew you're doing the podcast, and you know, so we'll great. do a burger review at some point. Yeah, for sure. And with all your things, I'd love to have you back again. Yeah, like, like I said before, you got here. Um, it's a bad on my part that I didn't prep much, but uh, we had I, a well, great you know combo. That's what I wanted to happen anyway. You yeah, know, like, it's a lot of just have a conversation. I just wanted to. But like now, catch up, man. Yeah. Like, you know. But now I'm what I would like now is next time is we we've, we've had this connection now. We can talk after some of your developments here. If it's I, yeah. I, I hope we don't go two years without talking again. I hope we talk, but I uh, camera, anything aside, I love that you're working on something else new because mm -hmm. myself I'm always I'm working on a bunch of stuff too. We're so I love working, it. Man. Yeah, bro. We're always like, working. I love it. I hope that we've re, re reconnected now. We can yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Bro, I love it. Love it. Love it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> My man. <laughs> okay, we'll shut her down. We're, we're, it's still working now, so we're Still good. working. Cool.